Welcome back to another Rig Review, and today we're going to take a look at May from Pro Rigs, which you can find here. That is the Pro Rig site. I'm on the character side, all characters. You can see all of them here. This is the couples version. So we'll look at her. And I am using the compatible 2224 version, and this is release 14. And I'm opening this in Maya 2022. And of course, I'll put that on the Animation Review site where I do walkthroughs of a bunch of rigs. Feel free to let me know if you have a rig that you want me to go through. This goes all the way down. There are a lot of them organized on the left and so on. Anyway, you can check it out. Let's get to the rig. That is the rig in its glory. When you open this up here, sometimes you're going to have controllers that are visible. Yes or no. Not in this case. You have curves here. Sometimes you have surfaces. You can see this here. And for some rigs, sometimes you have locators that do extra work, not in this case. So I'm going to leave that on. There's nothing in the layers here. This is all that you can see. Let's start with the main controller. This is the build. This is version 107 in this case. And that's it. There's no scale. This is on this controller. So on this one, you have global scale. This is through a channel, not scaling like this. And you have visibility for all of this. You can see this can be on and off and this can be very customized, which is cool. And you got the gimbal on off. So you can see that here. Body polish. I'm going to leave that on just for now. Face polish on off. Let's go to the face so you can see it. Here is face polish. Let me turn this all on. Clothing extra. Yes, for sure. I'm going to leave that on as well. Then visibility, you got torso, yay or nay, head and neck, yay, yay. I was going to say yay or nay again, hair, yes or no, and then legs, yes or no. As you go down here, the complexity of the geometry, you'll see this will change here. You just go all the way to two. I'm going to leave this to one. And then reference here, you can see this uh, here, normal template reference, if you go back to normal. I can actually select the geometry here and do nothing, but you can select it if you need to change textures or do whatever you want to do with it. I'm going to go back to reference. That way I don't accidentally select anything. And as always, if you have multiple inner controllers or main controllers, I don't know why I do this every time. It makes me laugh because you can go here and then you can make it Superman with different pivot points and you can fly, which I don't know. Do I ever see characters <laughs> animated like that? I don't know. But it's there just in case you have to change pivot points for whatever reason. I don't know. Let's go here. You got this controller. And if you go on the right here, you got all your shader options, right? So you got original uh, up here. You have custom. And when you go to custom, you can change all of that. Obviously, let's go all the way back. That is the original here. And you got this for uh, skin, hair, shirt, uh, secondary shirt, pants let's go down here clumsily there you go pants what do we have here shoes teeth tongue gums eyes iris pupil accessory one and highlight shader that is a bunch i love it also let me just go here so if you are here where is this there you go eyes you know as i was saying highlight what's the highlight you got a highlight here so just in case anybody's wondering what are you talking about? It's eye highlights, which not every rig has, but this rig does. All right. Let's go bottom to top. As always, don't know why, but I started like this. So I will continue. This is your leg controller like that. And then as always, I like to point this out. Some rigs have it, some don't. So you move the foot. Knee doesn't move. You can either do this with your pull vector or you have a twist here. And you can do it via channel if that's what you prefer. At the same time, you have your foot wall. Foot wall. I was looking at pole vector, yes or no, on off, and I was mixing words here. Foot roll, yes or nay, goes back as well. You got a foot bank like that, which is underused. The students should use more foot banks. Heel pivot like that. You got toe pivot like that. And then you got your toe spin like this. You got a heel spin like that. And foot squash, which is great. Not every rig has that either. Then back here, you got IKFK leg switching here. Uh, you got world space. You got stretchy, yeah, or nay. 
upper lower leg you know all that stuff is always kind of the same ish it's good to have volume compensation is great too so if you take this here right it's going to go like that but if you don't want that there you go volume compensation whoops yeah or nay also auto stretch yeah or nay and uh foot scale where is it there you go foot scale yeah or nay and of course if you switch this to clumsily there you go to ik that switches and you can see it's this one all right then let's go down here we got this one and for this you got toe rotation order but that's it no scale and you got this one here and that is the ugh, foot gimbal here stretching all that jazz this one is your bend here this one is your bend here and this one is your bend here and obviously it's going to be on all positions don't forget selecting this gives you the knee pin which you want to add the uh, volume compensation here. And that's, of course, on both sides. Let's go up. You have, let me do clothing later. You're going to have that inner one. This is your gimbal. So this is your root. You can see I can arms at this point. Nothing else on the channels. Always double check what controls will give you. Same thing here. This is your other. Obviously, you can rotate as well. Can you translate? Uh, scale? No. Then we have this guy. That is going to be your hips. Like that you can see how much the clothing follows let me double check something if you select this you have controllers you have scale all right all the way down to the bottom part what would be cool so i just dealt with a rig that had this there would be an option that says parent control on or off meaning that if you move your hips around it would not actually move the cloth around that would be helpful as well so you don't have to counter animate but let me continue here then you got your spine like that you can also translate of course here's one here there you go that's your spine bend so you have a couple of these to reshape you got the same thing here same thing here then we have on the sides here you can see this to move these in and out no scale this is just translate at this point here and my, why not since we're here right these are all your clothing things here and that's your overall no that's the middle part you're gonna select these clumsily today is clumsy day like that you can put you know collection sets whatever and then you can move everything Ooh, or not is the other middle part because it's not part of the chain okay this would be your translate to move that middle part like that then we have here clothing more to move that in and out then this goes all the way up to here checking just here you got volume compensation here you also have breathing oh it's a nice breathing through here okay that's cool on here uh no options here no options here no options here always double check sometimes even i i miss it that is your neck like that. And then on this, you got controls. So you have, and let me turn this on so you can see more. Neck tents, that's cool. That is rare on rigs, but if you have someone that goes specifically on the certain mouse shapes, it's great to have that. I like this a lot. Again, align in terms of world and chest, just in case. So if I do like that, and then I take this and I say chest is going to follow the chest. And if you don't want the head to do all this, you also have neck, right? So now it's like that. And if I move this forward, it follows this guy and so on. So these are all your world space switchers. These are your Benbows again here and here all the way to here. You're going to have the same thing here. So you got your pin. That's great too. Then you got your IK arm. Oh no, <laughs> of course not. That's the IK arm. That is your sleeve. And let's see how far back. Ooh, since we have geometry underneath, that's great. And you also have this in translate and rotate. This is cool because then you can animate this hand going. <laughs> like, no, oh, this is just painful, painful to watch. All right, well, let's go through controllers. There's a twist here, 
right? And then I can take this, which also shows you that this is your IK arm setup where if you move this around, your wrist stays in the same orientation. And if you've watched any of my rig reviews, you know how much I'm harping over non-sticky IK arms that only a few rigs have, notably the Vixen rig. And you know, I'm gonna say this every time, just because you have to constantly counter animate. If you move this around and you don't move the wrist with it, it's gonna look like an IK, uh, an IK arm. It's just not a fan in terms of workflow, but I would say 99% of the rigs have it. Except all the rigs that ILM did not, and it was so great. Anyway, the reason why I'm doing all of this, we're going, what the hell is he doing? I can take this, and now, thanks to this rig, you can go, she can pull or push whatever her sleeves back. I could have just said it without doing all of this, but I think that's cool, and that already opens up new avenues in terms of acting and cloth interaction and blah, blah, blah. I think that's really cool. Anyway, that's just me, maybe. Then let's go back to here. These are the only options on the controllers. Always double check. You got your IK, so you got your twist. So if you do this and you, there you go, twist it like that or like that, if you want. Auto stretch, use pull vector, yay or nay. Then you got your finger options. So this is going all the way back where you can rotate, do all of this here, or of course use uh, clumsily again. <laughs> Fingers like that, that goes all the way. You can see this. You got this on all fingers. Well, oh, like that. If you want to do just the tips here. Then if you have this one, which not every rig has. Well, first of all, it has an IK FK switch, as you can see here, which all rigs have. But then you got your fingers where you can go here in the channels instead of here. That's a better view instead of doing it on those controllers. Not every rig has it. And it's great for quick blocking or that, like extra little tweaks. If you want to do like a relaxed hand pose, I love this, by the way, the slide like this, super helpful. Scrunch like that, right? You can see how the fingers go up. It's actually really nice. I love all that stuff here. Thumb and a relaxed for quick blocking. I think this is so great because oftentimes students have shots where it's kind of like that and it gets kind of, I don't say distracting, obviously I can see past it. But it's also nice to just put in your relaxed pose like that. And then you add that little thumb curl, whoops, thumb curl like that, right? And then you're already in, your, in a relaxed pose. I like this a lot. Then let's go back here. You got your arch for this, for cupping here, and then palm like that for the whole thing. And then like that and scale is one of the few things you can scale is that. And obviously it's gonna be the same thing on the other side. Now, let's get to the head, because there are a lot of options here. Wait, wait, shoulders. <laughs> we got your shoulders here. Actually, let me show you like this. Let's go to FK, and then your FK controller is right there. And then you go up, and you can see you got alignment, world order, new world, all that good stuff there. And where is it? There you go. That's for that and you can have uh, allow twist what it doesn't have which i think would still be cool is an auto clavicle so that if you do move your arm up and down that it would do it for you automatically and then you can go in there and potentially tweak on top of that why not it could be helpful i like it back here just in case just quickly here right you got the collar here and then we have back here for hair volume you can see in the controls that's that's it so you can't scale or anything but definitely helps you in moving things around like that. Or if someone, if she's leaning against something, you can go in there. Can you rotate? No. You kind of need to maybe be able to uh, rotate so that you could potentially flatten if she's, you know, puts her head against the wall or something. I don't know. That could be interesting. Then this one, this is your upper head. So this is going to be your squash and stretch this way with volume competition right there. And then you got the same thing here for the chin. This is not for the full lower part here. You can see it looks like it would pull the whole thing, but it's not. That's for the the whole head. What am I doing here? There you go. Then let's go here. Let's go one up here. That is your chin. Can you scale? No, but you can move things around like that. One up is going to be your jaw. Let's keep that open just a little bit. Because then you have your 
shapes like this. You have your shapes here, and then you got your detail shapes everywhere. That's pretty awesome. A lot of control here. So you got your smile, and then you can go into this potentially, and then more. These are translates. Ah, you got rotates this way. So if you want to do on main controllers like this, not like that here, you can rotate this like that for M shapes and all that good stuff. Also here, you can roll like that if you want. This controller, you go here, has curl like that for the whole thing, but also thickness. That's pretty sensitive there. There you go. That's especially important when you have M and compression shapes. Don't forget these. Then, back there. Ooh, there you go. That is for your tongue, and you can see all the different controllers, all of that. Now, as I'm bringing this down here, and let's bring uh, this guy. Draw down, you can see here the teeth. So you're gonna have controllers here to move this around. And let me check, is that the one? No, or is it? Yes, it is. That's for the whole teeth, and you're gonna have the same thing here. So for making things a bit more appealing, depending on where you work in the show, you wanna don't like maybe don't like to see the uh, the lower part of the teeth. So no, that's not it. Where is it? This guy. You might want to adjust the teeth visually so it looks more like that, a bit more graphic, and so on. So that's why we have it. Then you got your controller here to pull this down. Also nostrils. Also nope. No step here. Scale if you want. Always check controls. Not all of them have scale, but you can here. And you have an overall to bend this, which I like a lot. Sometimes the rigs just kind of stop here and you have to kind of do that for any line of action in the head. This is cool to have that here. Here, here's another one. And that moves the lower part of the head. All right, so you've got three of these here. Then cheek here and cheek here. Don't forget controls. There's a puff like that and as you smile right you might bring all those things up a little bit and puffing and blah 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 then you can also push up you have shapes here you can see some of the wrinkles that's cool and of course transit here for your lids and then you go in there and you can start shaping things around you can see there's some limits to it it's not super free form but i like it so you don't break the rig it's almost like there's some dampening to it which is actually nice. I like that, the feel of not breaking the ring like that. And then of course you have this. While you do this, you can also translate this way to change uh, the height of the lid here. So can I, let me see. No, which one is this one? All right, that you translate. So if you have an eye go out like this, you could move it like that so that the pupil is you know, pushing it up this way. So you don't have stuff cut like that like the high point is here even though the eyeball is over there anyway you can do that let me just go back here and you have here texture uh movement here for these sorry messy there you go out like that and ty and then you have length and bend and then since i was there let me touch this here translate and also lids follow eye you can turn that on off Pupils, you got dilation and all that in here as well, up and down like that. Squash and stretch, just in case. Undo too much, there you go. Highlights, right, you can change that, which is cool. And also placement, if it follows the eye or not, that's also cool, why not? And also you can turn it off if you want. Then you got your bigger one. This is not for the eye controller, so let's move this guy out. This one is gonna move the whole thing over. You can not scale through that, but here is an eye scale in the controllers here, or in the channels. Well, I say controls in the channels. Then you got your squint like that, skew like that, scale effect brow, and squash and stretch, and of course all the rotational and transitional uh, transition stuff. That's cool. Lots of options here. Then we're getting into eyebrows, right? You can obviously do all of this. Don't forget this one here under the hair, textures and lights. There you go. To do all of that. Now looking into the channels, the other options. So we have that obviously on both sides. But before I get to, well, might as well do it. Here's your hair. You can translate, you can rotate, and you can actually scale. And you can bring this up so the whole thing 
goes more up like that. Now, just since we're here, you got your eyes. So this, you can see how the lids follow a little bit. You can turn that on or off if you want. You could scale. I never really do it like that. I usually use this to change any type of angles that you need to have. Now, looking at this one, you have a line head. So if I take the head, the eyes go with it. But I usually work in world so that if I move the head, it keeps looking where I'm supposed to look. I kind of prefer that because otherwise sometimes you have animation it starts to feel kind of spaced out and robotic because the eyes are just kind of following. It's, it's a bit more like a doll, a bit, a bit uh, lifeless in a way. Okay, that's all the hair stuff. We have a controller here. That is your head gimbal. So you can move that with that controller. Like I said, this is the hair. And that is that. I don't think I missed anything. Lots of controls. Big fan of the cloth control. I think it's great. It would be cool. I mean, is this separate geometry? Since we already, I'm just being greedy now, but since we have this, which I love, I think that's great. It would be cool to have these kind of controls here as well, just in case she wants to grab this and pull it up a little bit. Like maybe, you know, she's cold and she wants to pull up and stretch this a little bit and then manually, you know, like, oh, I'm cold. I want to move that over. Like more control over cloth is awesome. I know it's a pain to do. You can see here, what if you move it over? Do you get intersections and all of that stuff? I know it's not easy. Try to maybe do that and so on. You're going to have to adjust things depending on the angle, I guess. Um, so the more controls on cloth, the better. Again, this could slow down the rig. I'm not a rigger, so this is like some ignorance. I would like this. And everybody goes, yeah, but if you do that, it breaks this, this, and this. <laughs> I know that. But that's it. Very cool. Very appealing. The whole suite of um, pro rigs are very appealing. And that is that. Thanks for watching. If you're still watching, this is what, like 20 minutes or something, right? Uh, I will continue. I'm going to cover every rig for the pro rigs. I just created a playlist to cover or to put in and group all the pro rigs rigs and that's that don't want to miss the next one feel free to subscribe you can also like if you want for the algorithm and that is that thanks for watching and i'll see you in my next clip